Far too often, those who proclaim their political stripe in America are expected to fall in line behind their candidates and their party. Many times when prominent individuals fail to toe the line the party sets, there are political consequences. Our next guest could care less. A member of the Republican Party who has no issue calling out those in the GOP who say foolish things either because they're seeking to fan flames or just because, in her opinion, they're too ignorant to know the facts. Saba Ahmed was at one time a Democrat who came to the realization the left had little to offer her in the line of pro-life and pro-traditional family values. So she turned to the right side a few years back and refuses to step in the line. A Pakistani American, she has grown tired of what she considers the massive misinformation spread by the GOP presidential frontrunners and is tireless in calling them on it. Welcome Saba Ahmed to the hard line. Saba, I want to thank you so much for joining us. There's so many things that we can talk about, but I need to start out with one thing that came today from the man who is currently leading the Republican field for President Donald Trump. He said he wants to hold all Muslim immigration to the United States, a total and complete shutdown until elected leaders can figure out what is going on. What's your reaction when you hear that? Well, thank you so much for having me. My reaction is that he is completely not well versed on the U.S. Constitution. There is no religious trust that is allowed. We're not allowed to do religious discrimination when it comes to Muslims coming from overseas legally. A lot of them come on H-1B visas from India, Pakistan, um, all over Asia. Um, and I don't think that that's fair for Donald Trump to lump us all together and tell us all that somehow all Muslims, 1.6 billion of us are an issue because of the acts of a few. Then what do you do then, I guess? Let's specifically look at American Muslims here. I mean, this is your country. What then do exactly. American Muslims who are not radicals, who fight against this, what are you supposed to do now? Because you know that with Mr. Trump saying this, there's going to people out there who will bite on this and say he is absolutely right. Well, and that's why it's going to be tougher for him to win back the White House from the Democrats, because the Democrats are going out of their way to reach out to Muslim Americans. Yesterday, you saw President Obama speaking for the Muslim American community. I think if Trump is serious about winning the White House, he needs to reach out to Muslim Americans to fight the war on terror. We, he cannot win a radical ideology without the help of moderate Muslim Americans who can counter the narrative and probably help deal with them, uh, with the radicals and the extremists. It has to be the Muslim Americans who will provide the solutions to win the war. Otherwise, this is going to go on forever and we're just going to continue in endless wars. And uh, we have seen the last 15 years has not gotten us any more safer than we were before 9-11. You were a Democrat once, you are now a Republican. And when you speak about Donald Trump right there, there are those who believe that if he is the Republican presidential nominee, that it will hand the election to Hillary Clinton. Do you believe the same way? I do. He's offending so many people. I mean, he's gone after Latinos, women, um, uh, Muslims. I mean, he's, he, I think Trump has great credentials, business skills to fix the economy, help with the budget. He, if he focuses on what good he can do for the country, that would do so much more than alienating his minority voters. Wait a minute, yes, let me stop right there. You, sound, million, Saba, I think he you, you to, sound like somebody, he though, the, what, what you just said, you sound like somebody that would vote for Donald Trump if indeed he wasn't acting this way about Muslims. Am I correct? Exactly. Yes, definitely. We would love to support him if he's the Republican nominee, but I would like to see him tone down his anti-Muslim rhetoric and reach out to Muslim Americans to be on his campaign and to help make America great for everyone. The president in his speech Sunday night believes, finally said that he thought the major problem, admitting that Islam, radical Islam, is part of the problem. He's actually admitting to it. Did he get it right in some sense, though, by finally using those words out loud? Because some people say you should never use the words radical Islam. The thing is, there is no defining test to define radicals. When you say that to a Muslim, uh, for us, it's all offensive because we don't know what you con what you think it may is radical. Maybe like basic teachings of Islam. Like so, you can't target an entire religion and 1.6 billion Muslims. You have to def define radicals and extremists in all faith who are committing atrocities. And you know, we cannot label a whole religion. Uh, for the acts of a few bad people. Saab, I've got about 30, 40 seconds left. Do you believe that the appearances that you make here and other places, do you think you're making a difference to get people to see 
Muslims in a different light? Because there's so much noise out there right now that would seem to be nearly impossible. I know, but I am making a difference, and I see, receive so much positive mail as well as some haters. But I think the good that we're trying to do is well worth the effort. I think if we can get through to Trump or Cruz or some of our leading Republican candidates, I think we all face national security challenges, and if we all work together, we can solve them for, for the good of everyone. I would like to see you sit down with... Mr. Trump or Mr. Cruz, I would love I'd to be love a fly to. on the wall in that conversation. I think it's something that needs to be done. Learn more about exactly. the group, RepublicanMuslimCoalition.com. Saba, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Please come back again. Let's continue this discussion because we cannot be silent any longer. Thank you so much for joining us. Saba Ahmed is making quite an impact, as a matter of fact, and in that interview, when I said to her, it would be great to see you and Donald Trump sit down and talk, she's trying to make that happen, because actually today, she sent a letter to Donald Trump, she made it available to several media outlets, including Politico, and it was published this morning, where she said, quote, I have found that some of your comments reflect a lack of familiarity with the Islamic faith. I would like to correct that, if you will permit me. And what she has done is, she has challenged, invited, challenged, use your own word, but challenged Donald Trump to come to a mosque and attend an Islamic prayer service in the wake of everything that he has said. Nothing back yet from Donald Trump to see if he would actually be willing to take her up on that offer. Tell us what you think about it, too, and whether or not you think it's a good idea. And should Trump actually do it? Why not? Tell us on Facebook, tell us on Twitter, and we will then talk about it here. Stay with us, because the fastest 60 Minutes in News continues.